Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. Last week and this week, we are studying pride and humility. And as we have seen already, this is a very important and necessary lesson for everybody. Everybody, you included, you have pride. And as I said yesterday, there are times when we hear sermons that are corrective and we think, well, so-and-so needs to hear this. This is for them. But guess what? It's for you. You're the one here. You're the one listening. And that's because God knows you need it. So we can't think about all the other people that are needing this. You're probably thinking of people while you listen. And you might be thinking of how you can see these symptoms in those people around you. So-and-so is like this and so-and-so is like this. Your husband, your wife, or anybody else. And you're beginning to recognize, oh, that person has a lot of pride. Well, guess what? This isn't for them right now. This is for you to look at yourself. So stop thinking about everybody else that needs to hear this. You're the one who needs to hear it and is hearing it for yourself, for you to be corrected in this most vital area of our heart. This is a heart issue. And everybody's got the same problem, the same sinful disease called pride. We all have it, so we all have to kill it and crucify it. So don't think about everybody else that needs to hear this. Think about how much you need to hear it and how you need to make corrections and changes in your own life, in your own heart, in your own mind, in your own thinking to to acknowledge this and to put it in practice and make adjustments in your own heart and mind. And yesterday we we we've been starting to look at some of the very specific characteristics of pride, symptoms of pride, signs of pride, the way pride thinks, talks and acts so that we can learn to see it and recognize it when it's there. And yes, you will see it more in other people, but you've got to ignore it in everybody else, but shine the spotlight on it in your own heart and mind. Deal with it aggressively, brutally, kill it, crucify it, humble yourself diligently, apply it to yourself. And so we've already started with pride believes lies. Pride is self-deceived. Pride, Obadiah verse three says, the pride of your heart has deceived you. In Romans 12, three, it says, do not think more high of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment. Think of yourself with sober judgment. In modern day vernacular, we could say, be brutally honest with yourself about yourself. Humility loves the truth. Even pride, pride wants to be blind. Pride wants to be blind. Pride does not want to see its own faults. Pride wants to cover up its own faults and sweep them under the rug and ignore them. But humility loves the truth even when it hurts. And so we went from that point to the second point yesterday about pride. And we saw that pride blame shifts. Pride 
blame shifts or pride passes the blame because you don't want to see the truth or know the truth about yourself. You will pass the blame to everything and everyone else, including God and many, many Christians, most Christians have fallen into the trap at some time of saying, why God, did you let this happen? Why God didn't you do this, do something? Why didn't you God? Why didn't you stop this bad thing? Why did you let this bad thing? And that is passing the blame on God and to God. And then we talked about, you know, there are times when people are in situations and conditions in their life and they'll blame everything around them and they'll blame, they'll blame the job, they'll blame their society, they'll blame the parents that they had and what their parents did or did not do. Even if your parents were not good parents, as we said yesterday, you are in 100% control over you. And you've had hundreds and thousands of opportunities to make choices. And where you are today in your life is the result of the choices you have made, not the result of what your parents did, not the result of what your parents did or somebody else did to you. You know, you say, well, maybe it was an ex business partner that cheated you, did you wrong, stole from you. Maybe somebody in the past did something terrible to you and you're still living with that problem. It's your fault. It's your fault. You have thousands of choices to make every day and you can choose to get up and get out of that. And where you are today and what you have and who you are and what you are. It's not because of anybody else, but because of you, because of the choices you have made in your own life. And let me remind you, it's going to be those choices that you're going to stand before God on judgment day and give account for. You're going to stand before God on judgment day and you're not going to be able to say, well, it's because of my parents, what they did to me. It's because of my ex-boyfriend. It's because of my ex-business partner who did this to me. All of those will fall to the ground as empty words. And you will be standing before God as though naked with no excuse to make having to at that point accept blame. For your choices, because that's the way it is. You better, you're better off to do it now than then. In the future, on judgment day, you will have to give an account and take, acknowledge your own fault. And there will be no other excuse or blame, no person to stand with you that you can pass the blame on them. You're going to have to acknowledge your own choices. You might as well do it now. Accept the truth. Acknowledge the truth about the choices you have made, the things you've thought, said, and done. That's what makes who you are and what you have. Your thoughts, your words, your actions. Your thoughts. Your words, your actions are what have made you who you are today and what you are and what you have in life and the conditions and situations that you are in. And if you're in a bad situation, it's because of bad choices. There is no blaming God. Now, I want to bring up also With this, acknowledging your fault, acknowledging you are to blame for your choices. You cannot blame anybody else for your choices, your decisions, your thoughts, your words, 
your actions. You, you cannot blame anybody else for what you have thought, what you have said, what you have done, the choices you have made. You are in 100% control over your life. You can change and turn around and get out of that situation by choices. And by humbling yourself before God, you get grace and there will be an abundantly abundance of grace, a flood of grace from God to come in and flood in to help you, help you get out of that situation you're in. If you will just turn to God, humble yourself and, and accept you know, accept the, the truth, believe the truth, confess the truth, and then you will receive grace. But I wanted to say also, and I didn't get to say this yesterday, is that when we acknowledge the truth about our own faults, our own errors, our own mistakes, our own bad choices, Maybe you, everybody has made a bad choice in life. Some have made many, some have made fewer, but everybody has done it. You might have made some bad choices and gotten into some bad situations. I also want to encourage you today, even though you acknowledge it before God, let me say it like this. This is something that I heard and learned years ago. Confessing it to God is getting rid of it. Listen carefully. Confessing it to God is getting rid of it. In my mind, this is the way I see it. That when we confess it, it's like laying it on Jesus. So that he can take it for us. And he already did 2,000 years ago on the cross. He is not taking it now. He took it 2,000 years ago. When he died on the cross. But by confessing it, we're putting it on him on the cross. But when you're putting it on him, what else are you doing? You're getting it off of you. You're getting it off of you. What I'm wanting you to see is that when you confess it, you get rid of it. Then don't keep it anymore. This is where guilt and condemnation come. And guilt and condemnation can can paralyze you even after you have received forgiveness from God. When you dwell in the condemnation and the guilt of something you have done, it will paralyze you from moving forward, even though God has already forgiven you. So again, think of it like this. When you confess it to God, you get rid of it, get it off of you, get it out of you, get it out of your mind, get it out of your thinking. Yes, you have to make that first initial acknowledgement and confession. That's Romans 10, 9. If you will confess Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the, de- from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But there is also the acknowledgement of acknowledging I'm a sinner and I need God. I need Jesus. I need a savior. You make that acknowledgement. You receive Jesus as your see- savior. And then you receive righteousness. So I want to put in here that when you acknowledge your fault to God and you don't blame shift anymore, you're brutally honest. And and you'll have to do this again and again, because when you've made a mistake, you just say, God, I messed up. God, forgive me. You know, you get in an argument with your wife or your husband. You're going to have to get brutally honest with yourself and with God. Say, God, that was my fault. I should have shut up. I should not have argued. Arguing is sin. And we're going to get to that later. (laughs) Part of pride. (laughs) It's part of pride. Arguing is pride. 
So yes, you're partly guilty as well as your husband or wife, but you need to acknowledge your own part. Acknowledge your part. I was wrong. I shouldn't have said that. And then by acknowledging it to God, Lord, forgive me. And then you're casting it on the Lord Jesus Christ. You confess it and you're putting it on him and you're getting it off of you so that now you are clean and clear and free. After you confess it, you are free of it. It's gone. It's gone. Now receive your righteousness. You are made the righteousness of God in Christ. You are made the righteousness of God in Christ. And then you receive your righteousness and you go free of that past mistake. And if you don't, you're going to be crippled by it. It will continually torment you with guilt. So you got to get free of it. Now, I said before, you know, there have been people who say we don't confess our sin. You absolutely do. Because that's how you get rid of it. That's how you put it on Jesus. That's how you walk away free. But when you do it, you are free. You are free. You have to forgive yourself. Some things we've done, you know, sometimes people have done something so bad, they feel like they can never be forgiven. You're wrong. God's mercy, which is, Part of his uh, forgiveness is part of his mercy. It's unlimited. It is without bounds. There is no limit to the mercy of God. No limit. Just like there's no limit to God. God is limitless. So also there is no limit to his mercy. There is no end to his mercy. And forgiveness is part of his mercy. He has mercy on you. To forgive you. So he is boundless and limitless in his ability to forgive you no matter what you did. Even if you committed murder or if you raped someone or if you committed abortion, if you had, I mean, had an abortion. You know, there are women who live under a life of guilt after they had an abortion. Hey, God has mercy for you that is boundless, limitless. Endless. He, his mercy is more than enough to completely forgive you of that. Now you have to forgive yourself. You have to forgive yourself. Because if you don't forgive yourself, then you live under guilt. And guilt will kill you. Guilt will paralyze you. Guilt will cripple you. It can cripple you physically. I have seen testimonies of people who once they were crippling up with arthritic uh, rheumatoid arthritis, crippling up, bones crippling up. And when they released forgiveness on themselves, they forgave themselves. They were healed instantly because their own judgment against themselves brought arthritis, crippling arthritis, your judgment against yourself can even produce sickness and disease in your body. Listen carefully. I did not plan to talk about this. The Holy Spirit is giving this right now for you who need to hear it. Your judgment against yourself about something you did in the past that you feel you cannot forgive yourself for. That can produce sickness and disease in your body. And I have even seen the testimonies of people crippled because they had judged themselves guilty of something they did bad, something bad they did. And even though God forgave them, they could not forgive themselves. But after they said, I forgive myself, they were completely healed. So your judgment against yourself 
can even produce sickness and disease in your own body. If you're dealing with a sickness or disease in your body, it's your body fighting against itself. Arthritis is one of those kinds of diseases where your body fights against itself. It could be that you judged yourself guilty. Now, you do have to acknowledge the fault to start with, but put it on Jesus. Jesus died on the cross. He was, remember those nails that pierced his hands and feet. Remember the crown of thorns. Remember the spear that pierced in his side and his punishment brought you righteousness. You are made righteous because he was punished. You don't have to punish yourself. You don't have to punish yourself. Let me say, oh, God, help those who try to punish themselves. I'm even thinking of cutters. Cutters, those people who cut themselves, cut their arms and cut their wrists and cut their palms. And they say, because I feel like I have to punish myself. No, you don't. You don't have to punish yourself. Jesus took your punishment for you. So you don't have to be punished. Isaiah 53 it says in verse 5, Isaiah 53, 5, he was pierced, pierced, the, the nail piercing, the spear piercing. He was pierced for our transgressions, our transgressions. He took the piercing. He took the punishment. He was crushed for our iniquities, our sins, our iniquities, our our transgressions. He was crushed. He was pierced. He was nailed to the cross because of our sins. The punishment that brought us peace, peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Receive it today in Jesus name. You do not have to punish yourself. Jesus was punished for you and his punishment was for your peace, your wholeness, your rest, your comfort in him, your shalom, your wholeness, nothing missing, nothing broken. His punishment was for your forgiveness, your righteousness, your restoration to right standing with God. His wounds were for your healing. You can be healed of that sickness disease. You don't have to cut yourself. You don't have to pay a penalty for what you did. God, Jesus took the penalty for what you did already. Receive his punishment on your behalf and receive your forgiveness. Receive your righteousness right now. Just say this. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess that I did wrong, but I give it to you and I put it on you on the cross and I receive your punishment taken for me so that I am not punished anymore for what I have done wrong. I don't have to take any penalty for what I have done wrong. I receive peace. I receive mercy. I receive forgiveness. I receive righteousness. And by your wounds, I am healed. I receive my healing today in my body today because you took my punishment. You took my sickness and disease. You took my penalty. I receive your healing anointing in my spirit, soul, and body, in my heart, in my mind, and in my body right now. Father, I pray for those listening right now. In the name of Jesus, I 
take authority over the lies of the enemy that have spoken to you and told you you're unworthy and no good and that you can never be forgiven. I cancel that lie in Jesus name. I cancel that lie that says you could never be forgiven for what you did. Yes, you've already been forgiven. It's available. Receive it. Take it. Say it's mine. I'm forgiven. Hallelujah. In Jesus name, I plead the blood of Jesus over your eyes and over your ears and over your heart that you would no longer be deceived and and listening to those lies. I command right now that cutting spirit to be broken off of your life and to you for you to be free, healed and delivered of cutting yourself in Jesus name. And I command every self-inflicted judgment that has brought sickness and disease in your body. I command it right now be broken. You must also say, I forgive myself in Jesus name. And I reverse the judgment. Say it. I reverse the judgment I've made against myself. I reverse the judgment against myself, against me. In Jesus name. And I take authority over that in Jesus name. I command it to be broken. I command you be healed from the top of your head to the soles of your feet in Jesus name. Be restored. Be free. Be delivered in your heart and mind in Jesus name. Amen. Well, I'm out of time. So join me again tomorrow. And remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.